Section 3. Thoracic Vertebrae Typical Thoracic Vertebra We used Thoracic Vertebra earlier to define typical features of typical vertebrae, so we are now coming back to this group again in order to find out what makes group of Thoracic Vertebrae, 12 of them, being different compared to cervical or to lumbar group. As we have seen it earlier, there is fairly large size body with both upper as well as lower surfaces being practically flat. Posterior to the body we were able to identify pedicles, here is the right one, the left one, followed by left and right sided laminae that circumscribe the opening that was named vertebral foramen. Pedicles together with laminae form the neural arch or vertebral arch. Now what we see as difference between thoracic and other two group of individual vertebrae is number of different articular surfaces that need to make the contact with ribs because thoracic vertebrae are part of the thoracic cage or chest wall. On the upper and lower edge of the vertebral bodies, we would be able to find demifacets. What word demifacet exactly means? It's mean, it means half of the articular surface required to make joint with a rib. Therefore, these are called superior, and this one is the inferior demifacet of this particular thoracic vertebra. One typical rib is going to attach in an intervertebral space between two adjoining vertebrae where a vertebra below will add its superior demifacet and vertebra which is located above will add its inferior demifacet to make a full articular surface for a rib. Due to curvature of ribs there will be another contact point between typical rib and a typical thoracic vertebra. For that reason there will be additional full-size facet on the very tip of the transverse process of the thoracic vertebra. As the additional difference one can definitely observe the orientation of articular facets. In a thoracic group of vertebrae superior articular processes orient their facets so that they are practically sitting in a frontal plane that means that articular surface is directed nearly backwards and inferior articular processes would have their facets that are pointing almost in a straight anterior direction. Spinous processes of thoracic vertebrae are also quite long and as we can see it from this lateral view they quite steeply point inferiorly. Even a quick glance through the entire group of thoracic vertebrae will show that between them there are some differences and we realize that they are not exactly built the same. In order to see those atypical thoracic vertebrae we would be better off by taking a look at the entire segment of 12 thoracic vertebrae being lined up together in order to be able to find those differences and at the same time to explain what type of attachments ribs will exhibit relative to the thoracic vertebrae. So let's take a look. So here we are. We're seeing here all 12 thoracic vertebrae being held together by a plastic cord and of course the spaces that we would expect to have between bodies of adjoining vertebrae in a living person would be far greater because they would possess the intervertebral disc. So if we take a closer look at thoracic vertebra number one which is considered to be first of four atypical vertebrae we will find out that it has different arrangement of articular surfaces for ribs. First and foremost we're going to see next to the upper margin of its vertebral body full-size articular facet for the head of rib number one. That's why it's called the facet not the demifacet. Rib number one is fairly small and it's almost 
curved around not changing radius regardless of that there will be a contact between rib number one and the transverse process of vertebra number one so there will be additional facet here for rib number two there has to be a commonly built articular surface between ribs number one and two there is demi facet inferior demi facet on the inferior margin of vertebral body T1 combined with superior demi facet on the superior margin of vertebral body thoracic vertebra number two so this is where rib number two and its head will make a joint with the spinal column so compared to description of typical vertebra one can see immediately that there is a difference that thoracic vertebra number one has one full facet and then one demi facet as opposed to two demi facets described earlier. Thoracic vertebrae number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine are considered to be typical because each and every one of them will have superior demi facet and inferior demi facets on their bodies. There are only 12 ribs and there will be some changes in their attachment relative to spinal column at a level of 10th, 11th and 12th thoracic vertebra. So the last three in this group are also considered to be atypical. Let's take a look what makes atypical on T10, T11 and T12.